In 2036, a civil war has taken over Eastern Europe. American troops have arrived in the area to act as peacekeepers, especially in the lawless frontier controlled by warlord Victor, whose face has been seen by only a few people. Victor's power has been growing so fast that the Pentagon has decided to use robotic soldiers known as Gumps. During the Gumps' first mission, the team gets ambushed and soon the robots start getting destroyed. The field soldiers try their best to keep their defenses but they're slowly getting killed as well. At the base, Lieutenant Harp is keeping an eye on the fight through the drone he controls. Because he's always been a drone pilot, he's never been in an actual war zone and this whole deal is rather mundane to him. Suddenly he notices an unidentified truck coming towards the soldiers and reports it to Miller, asking for permission to launch a missile to destroy the vehicle since it may be a threat. However Miller rejects the idea because some of his men are still trapped. Displeased with this, Harp asks his partner Bale to confirm the airstrike with their captain, but he rejects him as well. Harp still thinks the truck is too dangerous, so he disobeys orders and decides to launch the missile anyway, blowing up the vehicle and killing a bunch of American soldiers that he only sees as collateral damage. Sometime later, Harp is brought to court-martial, where he defends his decision because he killed two men and a bunch of robots but saved Miller and 38 other soldiers. The higher-ups decide that Harp needs to learn what a real war zone and death are like and send him to Camp Nathaniel, the American military base in Ukraine. When he arrives at the camp, Harp notices there are gumps everywhere, including some shaped like dogs. Then he meets Colonel Eckhart, who reminds him that if he survives the mission, he'll go back to the Air Force, but if he dies, his story will teach others not to disobey. Eckhart sends him to Block 13, warning him that the captain isn't like them. Harp enters a building where he finds no soldiers, only scientists working on making and repairing gumps. There are lots of those robots around here too. By following the sound of old music, he finds a room at the back and meets Captain Leo, who recites Harp's file from memory and calls him out for being very cold. Then Leo grabs some stuff from a fridge while explaining their next mission. They must deliver vaccines to a clinic going through a cholera outbreak. Leo explains he belongs to Marine Special Operations, meaning he locates and removes advanced weapons from insurgents beyond the wire. Harp doesn't understand why such a soldier has so many regular cabinets, so Leo points out that keeping everything on paper means Russian hackers can't access it. After making Harp sign a non-disclosure agreement, Leo tells him all about Victor, the Russian warlord responsible for a bomb in Ukraine that killed more than 25,000 people. There's militia defending the independence of Ukraine, but Victor is planning to get to the Sistema perimeter, where Russia's nuclear bombs have been kept since the Cold War. They must stop Victor from using those nukes, so after they deliver the vaccines, they must gather intel on his next move. They'll be leaving in a few minutes, so Leo goes to the changing room to get ready and Herp is shocked to see Leo's real body, it turns out that the captain is actually an android super soldier. On their way out, Lep explains he isn't AI like the Gumps and that his existence is classified, However, when he sees other soldiers mistreating the gumps he immediately calls them out for it. He also reveals that Harp wasn't assigned just because, Leo chose him specifically because he needs someone that can think outside the box. While Harp puts their things in the car, he's suddenly grabbed by Miller and his men, who hit him and insult him for killing their two teammates. Before it can escalate, Leo interrupts them and the group goes away. Afterward Leo and Harp leave in the captain's car with a bunch of soldiers following them in armored trucks, and Leo explains they're entering the area outside the wire where attacks are very frequent and the American army has no control. During the trip, Harp shows Leo a picture of his fiance and Leo teases him a lot for it. Eventually they make it to a very poor neighborhood filled with armed survivors and find the road blocked by an aid truck that is being raided by the locals. The soldiers leave their trucks with a few gumps to try to open the way, but the locals aren't happy to see them and start throwing things at them. One of them hits the gump, causing the robot to immediately shoot the person in return. The situation is quickly escalating, but Leo orders his men to stand back because he has a plan. He lowers all his weapons and approaches the leader with his hands up, showing that they mean no harm and explaining they just want to deliver some vaccines. The locals accept to let them pass as long as they get to keep the aid truck, which Leo accepts. Harp is confused since he thought the US Army was supposed to neutralize and these people are armed, but Leo reminds him of their priorities. Suddenly, a group of people opens fire on them from the surrounding buildings. It turns out to be an ambush by Victor's men, who hit the aid truck on purpose to block the road. A fierce gunfight begins as the enemy reveals they brought special grenades to deal with the gumps and lots of buildings get hit by stray explosives, causing lots of explosions and walls to crumble down. This is Harp's first time in a fight without a drone and it takes a moment for his ears to recover from the loud noises that leave them ringing. There's no way for the Americans to win this soon, 
So Miller tells Leo and Harp to leave with the vaccines while the soldiers provide cover. The duo grabs their bags and immediately runs away, crossing through an old building to leave the town and reach the countryside. As they walk to their destination, Leo explains that the Pentagon made him black because unlike some blonde hunk, his face conveys neutrality, which makes people calm. As they cross the woods, they keep encountering bodies on the ground. Eventually they reach a refugee camp, but they're unaware that a man is following them. While Leo gives all the supplies to a doctor, Harp watches the refugees who are doing their best to survive and begins to understand the horrors of war. Under Victor's orders, the mysterious man suddenly opens fire, but Leo and Harp move quickly and the doctor and the nurse are hit instead. Leo shoots the guy and makes him fall to the ground, then he starts hurting him to make him talk. The man refuses to offer any information, so Leo leaves him for the locals to get revenge for their doctor. Harp wants to call their commander and ask for a backup, but Leo explains they'll only get caught in bureaucratic hell. Then Leo says they'll be leaving in a resistance truck to gather more intel and at first Harp doesn't want to because it feels like befriending the enemy, but he ends up joining Leo when the captain points out Harp won't survive if he keeps walking out there alone. During the trip, Leo tells Harp he had been right to fire the missile and save those 38 people in exchange for two. Then Leo makes Harp touch his arm, which is cold like steel, to remind him he only simulates a real man and therefore he also has the ability to break rules in certain circumstances and act of his own volition. Eventually they reach another destroyed town with one building standing, an orphanage full of kids that use gumps to play around. Harp meets Leo's friend Sophia, who has some intel to share. The classified access codes that Victor needs to operate the nuclear missiles are hidden in a vault in this part of the city. She doesn't have the exact location though, so they'll have to visit an armed dealer to get the details. Before they leave, Leo buys illegal weapons from her, since that's how she makes the money to maintain the orphanage. Harp is disgusted to learn Leo makes deals like this, and when Leo tells Sophia that this is Harp's first day, she asks him what he thinks of his work. It turns out most of these kids weren't orphaned by the Civil War, they actually were orphaned by the American bombing. Afterward the group goes to the market to find the dealer. A guard pretends the dealer isn't around, but Leo pushes him against the door to open it, only to suddenly get attacked. Leo uses his powerful body to quickly knock out or even kill all the attackers before grabbing the dealer to ask for the vault's location. A hidden guy tries to attack Sophia too, but she reveals she can defend herself and quickly defeats him. Another guy jumps on Leo to distract him, giving the dealer time to run away. However Leo quickly catches up to him and makes him talk, he admits he sold Russian gumps to Victor and offers the address of the bank that holds the vault. Before the group leaves, Sophia kills the dealer for being a traitor. Afterward, Leo kills the dealer's driver and takes the car with Harp to make it to the bank. Harp insists they should call backup, so Leo finally confesses the truth. His intel investigation into the perimeter had actually been aborted and the Pentagon wanted to shut Leo down. Everything they've been doing falls under breaking the rules. Harp panics because this will make his situation with the higher-ups worse, so Leo tells him he's free to leave if he thinks it's not worth breaking the rules to catch Victor. In the end Harp stays. When they finally make it to the street with the bank, Leo explains that the Russians are able to detect the signal of his tracker, so Harp has to take it out of his body. Harp uses a knife to access Leo's advanced system and after taking the tracker out, he's surprised to see how quickly it heals itself. Afterward they both arm themselves and finally approach the bank, noticing all the vehicles with dead people inside on the street and the dead guards at the entrance. The duo slowly makes their way inside and after silently killing an enemy, Leo finally gives Harp permission to call Eckhart and ask for backup. Suddenly Harp notices a person and tries to shoot, but Leo quickly stops him because it turns out the building is full of hostages. An employee tells them where the vault is, so Leo orders Harp to save the hostages while he goes after the codes. Then Leo begins making his way deeper inside, where he fights Victor's men using both his guns and his fists and destroying the bank in the process. Suddenly a Russian gump shows up and Leo can't do enough damage to it with his gun, so Harp gives him a grenade that Leo throws at the gump to finally defeat it. Afterward Harp calls Eckhart to ask for backup while taking the hostages outside, and Leo keeps running through the corridors, where he finds another gump that he quickly defeats with a second grenade. Outside, Harp sends all the hostages away and watches the American trucks arrive, only to discover Eckhart sent gumps but no actual soldiers. At that moment, he hears some screaming and sees the Russians come out with even more hostages and a bunch of gumps of their own. Harp tries to negotiate peacefully, however a gump notices the hostages being threatened and kills the guy causing a gunfight between both teams of robots to start. A few hostages try to run away and end up getting killed by the fire, but Harp sneaks around and guides the survivors into a cafe so they can escape through the back door. 
Then Harp calls Eckhart to ask why he didn't send the Marines and learns that there's a drone approaching the area, so he needs to leave quickly. Harp protests against the plan because there are still civilians nearby and Leo inside, but Eckhart says the same thing Harp thought back then, they're just collateral. Meanwhile inside the bank, Leo gets rid of another robot before jumping through a glass door to attack the Russians. He defeats most of them, but the guy with the codes runs upstairs and manages to shoot Leo in the chest. Thankfully it's not enough to stop Leo's android body and he chases after the guy until they reach the roof, where he opens fire. The man is knocked down after a few shots and Leo pushes him off the roof before patching up his wound and retrieving the codes. Back to Harp, he decides to stay a little longer to help the last civilian, shooting a Russian in the face to rescue her. Then they run inside the cafe right before the drone fires the missile and destroys the area. Seconds later, Harp comes out of the building feeling dizzy but at least alive, only to see all the burnt bodies on the streets. Luckily Leo hid before the explosion too and rescues Harp to take him away in a car to continue their journey. When Harp begins feeling better, he has to deal with the guilt of having piloted those drones because now he finally understands he's a murderer. Then he notices that Leo has the codes and asks him to call their superiors, but Leo refuses and Harp demands to know what truly is going on. Leo reveals that he has chosen Harp because the Android backup system allows him to ignore human authority if the person is exhibiting poor judgment and Harp has been doing nothing but make bad decisions. In fact, the chip he removed from Leo's body wasn't a tracker but a failsafe device, and thanks to the drone, Eckhart now thinks they're dead, so he has free range to act. A shocked Harp reaches for his gun to stop him, but Leo takes out his own weapon first and knocks Harp out, saying he's saving his life. Moments later, Harp wakes up when a few kids poke him with a stick and he discovers he's near another refugee camp. A mysterious van shows up and Harp tries to run away, but the men quickly capture him and take him to see the leader of the resistance, who turns out to be Sophia. She explains that Leo will be taking control of the nuclear missiles for the resistance and launch a nuclear strike on the US because they aren't really peacekeepers, they've only been making this war worse. Harp thinks this is a mass murder of millions of innocents, but Sophia points out it's the same kind of collateral the US gets when they send their drones to the local towns. Then Sophia lets Harp go home, thinking there's nothing he can do. Meanwhile Leo goes to meet with Victor himself, revealing that they've been working together all along. However Leo refuses to give him the codes and asks for the location of the missiles, which Victor refuses to share too. Since Leo was already angry because Victor's gumps tried to kill him, he immediately grabs Victor and uses him as a shield for revenge while he shoots all the men that surround him. When more soldiers come in, Leo lets go of Victor to fight them, killing them one by one in just a few seconds. Then Victor tries to shoot Leo, but the robot grabs a flag and kills Victor with it. Afterward Leo checks the computers and gets the location of the nukes, so he heads there. Later in the evening, Harp manages to make it back to the base, where he tells Miller and Eckhart everything that happened. They need a way to track Leo's location to stop him, so Harp calls Bale and makes her use a drone to locate Leo, who is driving along the Russian border. Eckhart points out he can't send forces there because it'll start a war with the Russians, so Harp volunteers to go after Leo alone. Before Harp leaves, Miller gives him incendiary rounds designed to go through armored vehicles, that way he'll be able to hurt Leo's android body. Soon Bale's drone loses visuals of Leo, so she sends the coordinates to Harp to find the place. Moments later Harp enters a building in the middle of nowhere and finds all the workers dead, in fact he sees one fall to his death nearby, which tells Harp where to find Leo. Carefully sneaking around, Harp makes it to the control room, only to discover Leo has already installed the codes. Next Harp tries to enter the room with the nukes, but Leo gets to him first and holds him against the wall by the neck. Harp tries to shoot him with his regular gun, but it does no damage and Leo manages to knock him out. Afterward Leo activates the codes and a 5 minute countdown starts as the pit with the missiles opens, which is immediately detected by the drone. At that moment Harp wakes up and shoots Leo with the special rounds, which immediately start burning down his android body. Then Harp tries to turn off the codes, but it's impossible. Leo uses the chance to reveal his real plan, saying that he wants to attack the US to shut down the program that created him because by removing the humanity out of soldiers, they increase the fighting, and the Gumps have become the face of a never-ending war. Harp understands the point but doesn't want innocents to die, so he gives Eckhart the okay for the drone to attack the building. After telling Leo that humans can do better, Harp runs away right before Bale launches the missile, destroying the building, Leo, and the nukes. For a few seconds, they think Harp is dead as well, but soon he reports that he's managed to escape. Harp is now considered a hero and they give him permission to go home so he can finally reunite with his fiancée.
Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.